Welcome to this mindfulness video, which is called What Mindfulness Is and What Mindfulness Is Not. And this video is brought to you by the Leitrim Development Company under the Social Inclusion and Community Activation Program. My name is Jared Martin Gottlieb. And I'm Dr. Paula Martin Gottlieb. So acknowledging these days, many people are experiencing stress, worry, anxiety, low mood, and overwhelm. So mindfulness can be a really useful tool to develop skills and resources within yourself to support you to navigate these difficult times with greater resilience and greater sense of well-being. So often when the system is feeling unsettled or vulnerable, the mind will have a natural negativity bias. And you could say that the mind can be a little bit like Velcro for the negative. So it's very easy that we notice that the mind is caught and spirals with worrisome thoughts, anxious thoughts, with rumination. And we can really find ourselves caught in difficult places. So in practicing mindfulness, we learn to notice how the mind is. And we learn to relate more skillfully, more wisely to our thoughts. And the practice is really one of learning to step back, to take a pause, and to bring ourselves back into the here and now. And one of the ways that mm, mindfulness doesn't help is the idea that mindfulness isn't for me. Mm. And it's not mindfulness that's really getting in the way there, but it's our ideas about what mindfulness are in the culture. So it's really important before it can be beneficial to really dispel some of the myths, some of the misconceptions about what mindfulness is. The biggest one is that mindfulness is about clearing the mind of thoughts. And this is a setup for suffering because it's not going to happen. Some thoughts are really helpful. And even the ones that are not helpful, it's not about making them go away. It's changing our relationship with not just thoughts, but our whole experience. It's being present, being in the here and now with thoughts, emotions, sensations, sounds, tastes, smells, the whole of this life. And actually, if we try to resist our thoughts, if we try to push them away or try to control them, or change them, we actually develop or create more tension in our system. So it's really counterproductive. What we're practicing with mindfulness is really learning to bring our experience or hold our experience with a certain friendly awareness, actually allowing our experience to be just as it is, moment by moment. Yeah, and if we're resisting the thoughts, then we're just practicing resistance. And then we might actually start judging ourselves for not doing what we're supposed to be doing. But mindfulness is about actually meeting all of it. The difficult thought in the first place, the resistance, the judgment with kindness, with a compassionate awareness. And when we do that, it's the compassionate awareness, it's the kindness, the acceptance that we're strengthening. So the second big misconception, I'll, I'll put it in a question, is one is, am I too busy to be mindful? I'm doing, I'm a doer. I've got a lot of things going on and, you know, mindfulness is about going to some retreat center or doing some long course or going to some special place and my life doesn't really have time for that. So mindfulness isn't for me, right? Mm, so that's a wonderful question. And the really helpful thing about mindfulness is it's not about taking us away from our lives. It's not about sitting purely on a meditation cushion, although sometimes that can be helpful. Really, mindfulness is about learning to become more awake and aware of what's happening in our lives. And it's about integrating awareness into our daily life. So, for example, you might be out for a walk. And rather than allowing yourself to be completely lost in thought, in planning, in texting maybe, or worrying about bills, or thinking about the tasks of the day that are to come, you can actually choose to move your attention to perhaps being aware of the contact of your feet with the floor, your feet with the ground as you walk, maybe noticing the shifting weight as you walk, the swing of your arms alongside the body. 
So that in bringing mindful awareness, there's a sense of actually grounding your attention in the here and now. It may be that you actually notice the coolness of the air against your skin on your walk. Or perhaps there's an awareness of the sound of the rain, the sound of the birds. So really we're inviting ourselves to come into a place of being present to all of our lives. So we're going to do an exercise now, which is one form of being present with our lives. And that's going to be a mindfulness meditation on the breath. And the purpose of this is not to become an A plus world's best breath watcher. It's really just one avenue into being into the here and now. And we're going to offer a few different ways of being with the breath. And we use the breath because it's often an easeful, neutral way to connect with our immediate experience. And maybe that's not the case for you right now, in which case I encourage you to go with something that is easeful right here. It might be the sounds happening, it might be... As Paula said, feet on the ground. But this will be guidance with the breath and I invite you to try it out. Um, we can start off by finding a way of sitting that's both, both at ease and also alert. Something that's just relaxed. And starting off by simply noticing the inflow, outflow of breath. The eyes can be open with a soft downward gaze, they can be closed. Either way, we're just noticing the flow of breath, noting breathing in as you're breathing in, and breathing out as you're breathing out, and just letting it be that simple. There's nothing you need to do in this moment, there's nowhere you need to be, there's nothing you need to make happen. Just simply being with the breathing in as you're breathing in, and the breathing out as you're breathing out. You might sense into where in the body the breath is felt most easily. It might be the inflow, outflow of air at the nostrils. It might be the expanding and contracting of the lungs. It might be the rising, falling of the belly seeing in your own experience where you're able to connect with the breath with the greatest of ease and giving yourself the gift of full attention with this place in the body. And you might now send the message inwardly calming with each in-breath and relaxing with each out breath. And if you don't feel calm or relaxed, it's not a problem. You're simply inviting calm relaxation with the flow of each breath. Calming, feeling the calm spread throughout the body, the face, the neck, the torso, the arms, the legs. Relaxing, inviting this relaxation to permeate, to spread on a cellular level through the skin, the muscle, the bone, so relaxation is spreading throughout the body. Calming, relaxing. Offering these messages, these invitations with the flow of each breath. And so those are just a few ways you can practice in the course of your day of being aware of the breath, with the inflow, outflow, with the being with the breath wherever it's felt most easily in the body, and being with these messages of calming, relaxing with the natural flow of each breath. Thank you. So a very helpful reminder of a skill and tool that's available to us 
Maybe just as you move into the next part of your day, just noticing the next moment you notice stress, anxiety, worry arising, and perhaps being curious about bringing your attention to your breath, about returning to this anchor that's available to us. And, you know, if stress is a persistent problem or um, anxiety or depression, please do be in contact with your GP, therapist, and really seek all avenues of support available to you as you deal with some difficulty that might be passing through. So thank you very much, and I hope this video was useful for you. Bye for now. Be well.